I'm Chris Stiller from Karlsruhe Institute of Technology in Germany. Yes, that will be in Baden-Baden, Germany near Karlsruhe. And um, we switch between the com continents of North America, Europe and Asia where the large vehicle manufacturers and the universities doing research in intelligent transportation systems are. What is it that you in your lab and your research is all about? Um, we work on computer vision for automated vehicles, so that seeing vehicles that see a uh, risk maybe before the driver sees it and helps the driver to avoid this risk. It started in the 80s that some pioneers started to, to build computers. At that time there were um, computers that filled at least the whole trunk of a car, sometimes the whole trunk of a of a transporter <laughs> uh, to compute some images and to do what actually the driver is doing, to see the road, to see obstacles and then react on that. Um, now we, um, the computational power is so strong and so cheap that we are able actually to see things in real time and to bring such systems into the market for the, for the benefit of people. So the possibilities have just increased um, tremendously and that's why um, computer vision is now entering um, vehicles and um, is um, doing functions that um, save people. Yes, we do work with several vehicle manufacturers and also with vehicle suppliers um, together and we also do fundamental research. So we have research that is aimed to um, work for products that go into the market maybe in 15 or 10 years, so very long. And we also have um, projects that um, aim at um, engagement of the functions in five years. And those are typically um, together with vehicle manufacturers. The most important thing is to, to get traffic flow going and to um, have impact on safety. That's, that's the two main issues that Intelligent Vehicles is about. Um, and as a third um, effect, which becomes more and more important now, um, is green driving. So what, what can ITS add to uh, improve um, the ecology um, of vehicles? Um, and what oh, will be the benefits of electric cars, for example, from, from intelligent um, vehicle modules. Right now um, our main focus is safety. So we are, we are looking at um, how can we build vehicles that see the environment and react in, in a smart way such that the um, driver um, will not undergo any risk um, of building a collision, um, a risk for himself or a risk for, for others in the traffic. So we have a vehicle that is equipped with several sensors and including computer vision, LiDAR, GPS um, um, and radar. And so we do see um, obstacles, pedestrians, sidewalk um, and if the driver is inattention and um, uh, makes a decision um, which would lead to a collision, um, we are able to correct that um, action and helps the driver um, keep off critical situations. In research at my lab, all that we do is we turn the steering wheel in the right direction um, and um, engage the brakes. But if the driver is uh, normally strong as I or you, um, and we would hold against it, um, we would still go in the direction um, that we want to go. Um, but at least the driver gets a, gets a feeling that the vehicle um, is reluctant to go into that direction. Um, the vehicle manufacturers then of course um, look at human machine interfaces that bring this decision that the vehicle um, does um, to avoid an, uh, a dangerous situation um, to the driver and these, these interfaces look very different like in some cases um, there's a emergency braking where the system when it is completely sure, just engages a brake, full braking, so the driver gets really um, pushed into the belt and he can't do anything anymore. And after about a second, 
um, the this is done. That, that's so that's one extreme. That's one extreme where the vehicle does everything on itself. The decision and the driver can't do anything against it. On the other hand, that can only be done when you're absolutely um, certain that a, that an accident would occur otherwise. And um, often it is better to um, react early um, with um, but less strong. So. Um, to um, if you see there is an upcoming danger with a, with a pedestrian, not wait until the collision is unavoidable and then do full braking, but to give the driver some information, um, some warning, so um, maybe some moderate braking such that the um, driver um, gets aware of the situation and um, then does the right action himself. That is much better, of course. And many colleagues of mine who are working in new machine interface, this is not my um, major um, topic of research. We, we're doing in the seeing of the, of the vehicle and we're collaborating with colleagues who um, look at haptic interfaces and um, acoustic interfaces, full braking interfaces, whatever um, there is. But um, f um, we focus on perceiving a situation and coming to a decision what would be necessary now um, in this situation, what would be an adequate uh, behavior of a good driver. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I'm, I'm absolutely certain that right now we're at the beginning where cars start to see, but they see in many situations much worse than humans do. In particular, they don't understand the situation really. In some situations, that's okay. So, so if they see the front vehicle is, too, is much slower than I am myself, then the situation is easy. But in a complicated situation, like in a city where you have many people and objects moving and walking around, many static objects, um, and the situation is often not understood by the vehicle and it doesn't know where is the right, where is the most critical personal object to look at and then it may do a wrong decision and so in that case we, we can't engage such a system. Um, so um, right now we are in the beginning where cars learn to see. I'm sure in about 20 years cars see at least as good as uh, humans do and then it would be possible to operate cars fully autonomously if you, if you want. Maybe drivers are allowed to drive their cars but in a critical situation um, the car would completely take over until the situation is safe again or if a driver doesn't want, um, you can sit on the rear seat, read a newspaper, work and let the car drive. Um, I'm, I'm sure we go in that direction and on the way um, there are lots of capabilities that car learn, cars learn and we will significantly um, further improve safety of vehicles on that way, get less and less accidents makes the car react in more and more situations as it understands more and more situations um, and um, get safety benefits on that way. Sure. Th there'll be several workshops um, and, and themes on the conference all oriented around safety, eco-friendliness and uh, maybe as a, as a third topic collaborative driving. So vehicles that um, communicate with each other and then um, do some um, um, cooperative kind of driving action. It could be both. <laughs> so, so it could be that the driver is involved. That would mean that the um, function should allow a very slow reaction because drivers need one, two, three seconds to, to react to, to something that they get communicated. Um, or it could be that the cars communicate directly and that um, some fast functions uh, are included um, which could be engaged in a millisecond, so one thousandth of a second. Yeah. There are already some functions today, like if you have a good navigation system, um, you take a shorter route, faster route, and you will also get offered an eco the most eco-friendly um, route now uh, as alternatives that you can choose. Um, to save traffic. There will be ways to improve um, um, the amount of traffic that we have to reduce that, so, so to help ride sharing or car sharing 
um, bring people together. There will be platooning um, applications where um, people who have at least one part of their journey in common um, can platoon and uh, save energy by that. And also there are um, some applications where you try to make electric vehicles that go on certain roads um, where they can get charged from, from in, per inductive loops. Um, and um, just for the last few kilometers where they have to leave those routes, they have to have a battery. So this, these vehicles will be much lighter because they need a much um, less capacity in their batteries and will be much cheaper um, than um, fully electric vehicles that we would have right now. In a convoy, and they'll, they could have a very short distance if they communicate because um, then you could get distances like a meter or even less uh, in distance, but you would still be safe because you would not wait for a driver to react with the first car brake brakes, but um, the car keeps communicating its speed and as soon as the first car brakes, um, even before it engages the brakes, just when you touch the pedal, um, this would be communicated to all other cars and they would engage their brakes maybe even before the first car does. So, so that this um, short driving distance is still safe and of course due to the wind resistance that the platoon has, um, um, which is much reduced as compared to multiple cars, um, you save a lot of fuels, up to 25% um, just by this means on um, journeys.